Imagine this scenario, my friend. Let's say you have a vertical photo and you want to upload that to Instagram. Fantastic. Now, the thing with Instagram is, although it does allow vertical photos to an extent, if you look at the Instagram profiles, it only allows for square previews. What do you do then? If you upload it, a part of the image would be cropped. What other options do we have? Well, let me show you a live preview of what is possible. So let me drag it and drop it over to a square canvas in Photoshop. The other option is introducing white borders. So those are the only two options you have. White borders, which look a little ugly, or the other option is crop the essential details and find a good place. Well, if you want to do none of that, there's a third option and that's what this video is all about and that is expansion. If you look at it, we can actually create the details here to fill it in. Now, expansion can be a little tricky, you know why? Because expansion depends on the details inside the image. But don't you worry, because in this video, I'm going to share with you three different techniques to expand an image in three different scenarios. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop, and if you want to go ahead and download any of the photos to follow along, check the links in the description to download them. So starting off with the very first example, this does have a complicated background. And the first technique is simply using the content aware film, the brand new one that comes with the later versions of Photoshop, the dedicated content aware fill dialog box. So first of all, let's create a square background, square canvas to be precise. All right, so let's unlock the background layer by clicking on the lock, press C for the crop tool, and you can choose one is to one square right there. And let's just expand it. And if you wanna expand from the center, hold the Alt key or the Option key while you do that. And this seems to be about right. All right, now how do we fill these spaces? Hold the control or command and click on the thumbnail of layer zero. Now, whatever is in the layer zero is selected. We want the opposite of that. So press control shift I. So the outside, as you can see, the empty spaces are being selected. Now, if we do fill it the way it is, it might create lines here around the edges. So we wanna avoid that. So let's go to select, modify, and then expand. Let the selection dig in a little bit. So about five or four pixels is fine. So now as you can see, the selection is digging in a little bit. Pretty amazing. Now let's go to edit and then content aware film. Now by default, it does a pretty good job. However, you can take your time and play with these settings of color adaptation, rotation adaptation, scale and mirror and see what works perfectly for you. Now the best part is it also allows you to choose which areas to sample from. So if you don't want to sample from the subject, so you can just paint that away, it won't sample from the subject. The way it is already, it's creating a massively amazing result. And as you can see, these trees right around here are perfect. Now at the bottom, all of the tree roots do, do look the same, tree bases look the same. So we can do a little tweak here and there to kind of manage it later. But for right now, this is a great starting point. Once you're happy with this, you can output to a new layer. So the filled areas would be on a new layer if you want to work non-destructively. To keep things simple, I'm just gonna go ahead and choose current layer and hit OK, and it looks perfect. Press Ctrl or Command D to deselect. Now you can select the Move tool to let go of the cropping marks right over there. Now, there's one problem with this, one major problem. Now this can be easily solved. All of the bases look the same. We can just mix and match here and there, move things here and there, that can be solved. But there's a major problem. This area right over there, this whole area just doesn't look right. So how do you fix that again? You can fill just that area with content aware fill again, or you can try other techniques too. So first of all, we're gonna give it a trial of content aware. So let's go ahead and select only the areas which look a little kind of meh here. So I feel that this whole area just looks a little awkward in here. So let's just select that area, okay? If you want to add to that, hold shift. While the lasso tool is selected, hold the Alt key, the Option key, and select to subtract. All right, once you have that selection, we can try that again. Go to Edit, and then Content Aware Fill. And it should do a pretty good job of redoing that area. As you can see, it did a pretty good job, but there are some things that just don't look right. It just looks awkward. So you can try rotation adaptation a little bit. Hit OK see what kind of changes it is creating. It's a little better. You can choose color adaptation to high or none. Well, to me, if you ask me, none of this is working. So I'm just gonna hit cancel, all right? It's okay the way it is. Maybe we'll have to do something else. And that something else can be, well, the patch tool. Press Control or Command J. We wanna have a backup of our original thing. So select the patch tool right over here. If you cannot see it, well, click and hold onto this group, the Spot Healing Brush Tool group. And in the same group, you will find the patch tool. All right, now with the patch tool selected, you can just select the areas which just 
doesn't look right for some reason. So if you ask me personally, I'm just going to replace this whole area with a brand new thing. So let's just select this area, this tree right over there, and we'll try to replace that area with this whole thing right in here and hope that it would work. All right. Now, we are moving that there. So instead of source, let's choose destination and we want to move it right over here to kind of clean things up a little bit. Okay. Well, that seems to be about right. And press Ctrl or Command D and it does create a pretty convincing result. Now on top of that, there are some things that are just not looking right here again. There are some things that are just not looking right. Well, for those areas, you can just select the lasso tool right over there. And at the top, make a selection of this. And here, this area is not looking right. So I'm going to make a selection of this. All right. And this is the complicated one. The other ones are going to be simple. Now let's go to edit and then contour fill. Let's try those areas again. So it's a matter of hit and trial. All right. So we have got a little closer. It's looking a little okay-ish. Now to give it a finishing touch, I know there are lots of faults here and there, but to fix it, we have to hide things. We have to be clever when it comes to expansion. And one of the major aspects of being clever is the ability to hide your mistakes. And that's the same thing that we're going to do here. So let's go to filter, convert for smart filter so that whatever filter we apply, we can change the values later. Now let's go to filter and then blur gallery. You already might have guessed what we're going to do here. Let's go to iris blur. Let's create a ball around this lady and her cycle. So we're going to make the ball a little bigger than this. All right, this seems to be about right. So we are trying to blur the edges, creating a nice effect. So hold the Alt key, the Option key and click on one of these points and bring it closer to the lady. So these points are the points where the blur starts and the blur ends around the edge of the circle or the ellipse or whatever you want to call it. All right. So these points are all right. So whatever value you choose. So if it's 15, the blur is zero right over here and it gradually increases from zero to 15 on the edge and beyond the edge, it is 15. So now let's increase it to hide our mistakes. And just when the mistake hides, you can stop right there. So for me, I'm going to go with about 35. This seems to be about right. You can also bring the points a little closer to this lady. Hit OK once you're satisfied. Now I know what you're thinking. There are some details that we have lost here. Don't you worry about it. When you apply a filter to a smart object, it is a smart filter and smart filters come with a mask. So select the mask right over there. Take the brush. Black is the foreground color. Take a soft round brush and paint back in the areas where you want the details back. So this cycle area, we want it back. So we're going to paint in black right over there. Okay. You also might want to paint the whole ground area. Okay. Also this area a little bit. All right. This area, we want a little more detail there. And there's detail in the lady. And there you have it. We have hidden most of our stupid mistakes. If you still want to hide it even more, well, there's also one more thing we can do. We can add a curves adjustment layer. We can take the rightmost point, bring it down and create a point in the middle, bring it down as well. So create this dark area. All right. Now select the mask, take the brush with a hard round brush. Just make a dab with black as the foreground color right here. Make sure the opacity and flow are at 100. Dab. Press Ctrl or Command D and adjust it. So we are creating a spotlight right over here. Now I know what you're thinking. The spotlight isn't showing up as we adjust it. Well, that is the uh, a Photoshop bug in Photoshop 2021. Nothing I can do about it. Let's just blur it. And the easiest way to blur it is selecting the mask, opening up the properties inside of that. If you go to the mask properties, just increase the feather. This is the most non-destructive way of doing it. So we're going to go with about 400. Yes, that looks pretty nice. Now, even after adding that feather, you can adjust it to your liking. Now it should show it's not showing. It's a Photoshop glitch Adobe. You guys need to just spruce up a little. All right, there you go. Here's the before. Here's the after a little more attention to us, the subject and a little more attention away from our mistakes. So let's go with a value of about 85. And there you have it. So let's look at the before and after. So this is the before. See, it was a very vertical image. And this is the after. All right, let's go with the example number two. And this technique is called the mirroring technique. Now there's no nomenclature to it. Uh, so I'm naming it. 
This technique can be used with something that has a flat surface or something that can be repeated in a pattern. So first of all, let's give her a square canvas. Press C for the crop tool. Take the anchor point at the bottom because we want to increase it or just increase the canvas size from the bottom. And there we go. Now we have to fill the upper area. Now we can use the content of fill, but the more effective way here would be just to mirror this. How do we mirror it? Well, select the rectangular marquee tool right over there and just make a selection till the head. Okay. All right. Anything that can be repeated. Now press control or command J. Now this thing is on its own layer. Now with the help of the move tool right there, press V to select the move tool, move it to the top, right? Press control or command T, right click on it and then choose flip vertical. If you're moving sideways, flip horizontal, flip vertical. Now as you can see, this is now exact mirror, right? Mirror image. Now I know what you're thinking. There might be some lines which gonna give it a telltale sign that this is a mirror, but don't you worry about that. We're gonna take care of that later. Now, isn't that fantastic? We're gonna repeat this step until the entire area is filled. Press Ctrl or Command J with this layer selected. Press Ctrl or Command T, move it up, right click on it, and then choose Flip Vertical, all right? Now, there is a line that I can see, no problem. Press Ctrl or Command T, move it a little down, a pixel or two, and it would be fine. Great. Now. We can merge both of these and just make it in one go. So select this lab, hold the control or command, select the second strip, press control or command E to merge both of these, press control or command J to duplicate. And now all you got to do is to just take it up. You don't even have to invert again and again. It's already done. You can just make it infinite if you wish, if you have an infinitely long cardboard uh, or a billboard or whatever you want to do with it. Now there are some repeating signs here and there, as you can see these things. How do you fix that? Very simple. First of all, just to make things simple, merge everything. So press Control Shift E to merge every layer right in there. Now select the lasso tool or the polygonal lasso tool. Now make a selection of the repeating pattern areas. So these are the areas which have a repeating pattern. I'm just going to add to that. Okay, probably we'll add a little more. So I'm holding Shift while I'm making these selections. The right hand side is fine. All right, let's do the same down at the bottom. Now at the bottom, I'm not going to go super accurate right here. You can take the time to do it. Just trying to save time here. All right, now all we have to do is to fill it. And how do we fill it? You already might have guessed it. It's a combination of techniques, guys. Let's go to edit and content of air fill. We're going to leave it to default. Let Photoshop do the magic. And it already did the magic. Hit OK and have a look at it. Boom, done. See how simple that was. So that was my friend, the mirroring technique. We also combined it with a little bit of content of fill because it might not always be perfect. Sometimes that's all what you need, but some other times you might need the assistance of other tools like the patch tool or the content of air tool to just make it a little bit better. Patch tool reminds me, if you could see some repeating patterns here, you can exchange things here and there just to take away the repeating patterns. Repeating patterns give you, give the audience a very, very blatant sign that this has been cloned and stamped. Let's move on to the third example. And this technique is called, well, Photoshop gave it a name already. This technique is the content aware scale technique. So this can be used when you have a plain background, plain, simple, solid background, very effective. All it does is just that it stretches areas which don't have details. That's it. So let's say you want to give this as well a square canvas. Now you can move it at the bottom. And we're going to try to stretch it. First of all, make a copy, press Ctrl or Command J. We always want to have a backup. Then go to Edit and Content Aware Scale. If you just hold the Shift key and increase it, you will notice that the sky is being stretched. A little bit of the ground is also being stretched. But have a look at the subjects so or the sea waves or so the mountains at the back. They are not being stretched. As I told you, only the things that are plain and they don't have details like the sky will be stretched. And if I continue to stretch it, it's stretching, it's stretching perfectly. But beyond a certain limit, you will notice that part of the subject right here is being stretched as well because shirt has lesser details right here, right in this area. So how do we avoid that? So just at the point where the subject is beginning to get stretched, stop. So right beyond this point, the subject is being stretched. Stop right there, hit enter or return and simply repeat the process again. Go to edit and then 
content aware scale again and hold the shift key and i'm gonna just stretch it again if at some point a part of the subject is being stretched stop and repeat but in this case it just worked in two steps and there you have it that's our third technique and that is the content aware scale so those are the three techniques that you can use with a combination of other techniques or you can use the first technique with the third one or the third with the second one use it all together to expand your images in photoshop if you don't like to crop or if you don't like to introduce white edges i hope this video helped you and if it did make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tips tricks or tutorials I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix and Perfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.